Greetings and welcome to Redeeming Grace Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Josh Mayer and I'd like to thank you for tuning in this week for our Sunday service. If you haven't already, make sure that you uh, access our service PDF. You'll find that on the link to our YouTube description on the video. Today we are celebrating the sixth, sixth Sunday of Easter. And with each Sunday in Easter, we get to focus on a different blessing that flows to us from the open tomb. And so today we look at that additional blessing of Jesus giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit, who's going to be with us to comfort us and to give us confidence. Our worship service will begin as we say our gathering verse together. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Ephesians 1, 7. We begin with our opening hymn, Take the World, but Give Me Jesus. Sacrifice for all of our sins. 
Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, I will, you, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, 
Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Here ends our lesson. Our lesson from the letters is recorded in 1 John chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but love with actions and in truth. Here ends our lesson. We continue with our verse of the day, which we will read together. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia! We continue our service as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service will continue with our children's message. Good morning, kids, and welcome to church again today. And in fact, 
I want to still say Happy Easter. Yes, we are still celebrating Easter season and Easter time. And over the past few weeks, we've looked at different pictures of life that the Bible gives us. Today, we get to talk about another picture of life. Just this last weekend when we were at the farm, my, my niece and nephew were so excited because they found a little cocoon. Now, what is a cocoon? What is that? Well, a, a worm or a caterpillar, well, sometimes uh, it will surround itself with like a little nest, and it goes to sleep for a long time, sometimes a couple weeks. And what happens after the end of that time? Have you ever seen a butterfly? Yes, you probably have. Those butterflies are what comes from when the caterpillar stays closed up in that little nest, that little cocoon, and it transforms. And it suddenly bursts out as something new and something different. It started as something ugly and gross and squishy, and it ends as something beautiful and lovely. That butterfly is a picture of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Just as he laid in the tomb for three days and burst forth, we're told in 1 Corinthians that Jesus was raised with a heavenly or a spiritual body. It was something new and glorious and different. And in the same way, Jesus' resurrection means our transformation. It has two different effects on us. One is our Life free from sin. Every time we do something in our life that is God-pleasing, when we show love to someone, whether it's our siblings or our friends, or maybe when we, ever, when we listen to our parents and we show them love and respect, well, those are good works. Good works that flow from our love of Jesus. We don't take credit for those things, but in fact, that beautiful transformation in our life is because of Jesus' love for us. So the first way he transforms us is through good works. But the second way will be like that butterfly, like Jesus' resurrection, is on the last day. When Jesus raises us up from the dead, we'll have new, different, and even better versions of ourselves, completely free from sin. That's what Jesus says today when he says, because I live, you also shall live. Now, before we close with prayer today, I want you to watch really closely. After the camera zooms out for our next hymn, you have to look really closely, and there's a butterfly up front in the church somewhere. I want you to see if you can find it. But for now, let's close with prayer. Lord Jesus, you are our life. Even as you broke free from the tomb, Lord, you transform our lives. You transform our lives with the power of your resurrection, the power of knowing our sins are forgiven through you. Help us to live this beautiful transformation until at last you raise us from the dead and this transformation is complete. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue with our sermon hymn. Thank mm -hmm. you.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, over the last 10 weeks, we sure have adjusted to a different lifestyle, haven't we? Some of us might have even gotten used to it, might have even enjoyed it. Getting to wear pajamas all day long, pretty much just rolling out of bed, and as many Americans were just working from home, they rolled out of bed and were literally in their office. No commute times. Well, now with the end of the stay-at-home order, that might be changing. Might. Some offices, however, have realized the value of having uh, remote workers, people who stay at home. This change might be here to stay. And as you might know from working at home, there are some challenges that come along with it. There are many distractions, lots going on, and so there's that challenge of being accountable, getting the work done in front of you for the day. But there's other distract or another challenge too. And that's a challenge of keeping remote workers connected, helping them feel like they're still part of the team. As we consider that that cultural shift to remote work, we might ask as Christians, is that how God sees us as just remote workers? Sometimes as Christians, we feel quite separated from God separated from his commands and separated from his his presence today jesus wants to change all of that for us when he comes to us and says because i live i do i direct your attention to these words from our gospel lesson for today john chapter 14 verses 15 through 21 I invite you to stand as we read these words in Jesus' name. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also shall live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. We bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, these are your words. We pray that you make us holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Jesus said, in a little while, the world will no longer see me. He's saying these words with his disciples on the Thursday night before he was going to die, in order to prepare them for what was coming, that in a matter of time, they would be removed from Jesus' visible presence. And it's true, Jesus wanted the world to see him in his state of humiliation. During all of his sufferings and trials, his, his, his crucifixion and death, he allowed the world to see him in his state of suffering. But as soon, as soon as Jesus rose from the dead, as soon as that changed, as soon as he was transfigured in glory, all of a sudden his presence was hidden from the world, as it is today. But before he leaves, 
like a parent that's going to leave their children for an evening, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Another way of asking that is, who will your master be? There was this movie I watched many years ago. Um, my, my younger sisters really enjoyed it. It was called Air Bud. And it was this movie about this golden retriever that was owned by a, a very cruel master that didn't love the dog. He kind of abused the dog, treated it awfully. And one day this golden retriever manages to escape but life doesn't get better for him after he escapes. Instead, he's, he's got a life out in the wild as a runaway. Lost, hungry, dirty. He looks like an absolute runt. Like no one should ever take him in. There's a, a little boy that, that finds this golden retriever. He takes him, he washes him, cleans him up, grooms him, gives him food, gives him drink, even gives him a name. He names him Buddy. One of my favorite parts of the movie is when he, watch, he brushes the dog's teeth with his mom's toothbrush. So he, he, he keeps this dog. He loves this dog. And just when it seems like things could never get better, the old master comes back. And he says, that's my animal. And it comes into a, a battle in a courtroom. On the one side, you've got the old master that has the original bill of sale proving that he owns the dog. He's bought it and paid for it. On the other side of the courtroom, you've got the master that everyone knows would be best for the dog, who loves the dog. What do they do? Well, a turn of events in the film, they let the dog decide. You know, it's one of those moments in the film. They, they put one person on each... Uh, on each side of the dog, and each master is calling to that dog who is in the middle, and the dog chooses who it wants to be its master. It's kind of a picture of how the Christian life sometimes feels. We live between two masters. One who loves us, who, who's washed us and claimed us and, and gives us everything we need, one who we know is the better master. And then there's that old, wicked devil. We're, we're born in his kennel. We belong to him by birth. Every time we sin, we, we sign our name at the bottom of the deed that says we belong to the devil. And oftentimes, a Christian's life, a Christian's heart, is constantly pulled between these two forces, constantly, and we're right in the middle, and it seems like God is calling us one way, the devil is calling us another way, and which way do we go? Well, our story doesn't always have the happy ending that, that buddies had. In fact, so often, because of that old Adam inside of us, that old Adam that we're born with, that we still live with every day, we're drawn right back to that old master, aren't we? We know his voice, we know his promises, his invitation, come to me if you want to have peace, if you want worldly security, if you want all your problems to go away, if you want to feel comfort, if you want to feel pleasure, I can give you all of that right here, right now. And time after time again, we prefer his leash and his kennel over to God's love. We reject what God says, we reject God's word, and choose that old master. And every time we do, every single sin we commit, again, we're, we're signing ourselves over to his deed. We're telling ourselves we belong to that old master. There's a, there's a phrase, an old Latin phrase, so we, we teach our confirmation kids in class. It goes like this, simul usus et peccator. It's Latin for, at the same time, 
saint and sinner. And it describes the reality of the Christian life caught between these two masters. It describes the paradox that we are a walking contradiction. Though day after day we sin, though day after day we, we are old natures drawn back to the old evil foe, we are both sinner and justified saint at the same time. It's a courtroom picture. It means that, that Jesus has come and, and when the, the devil's deed of ownership is based on our debt to God, our outstanding debt to God because of our sin, Jesus came and paid that sin in full with his own holy precious blood. And he forges a new deed, a new bill of ownership with his own blood. Jesus' new bill of ownership completely changes the rules. No longer is it based on who we choose, but it's based on God's choice. We're told in Ephesians chapter 1 that God chose us in Christ, chose you in Christ, before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless. We start our service today by saying, in Jesus we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. That comes right after God says, I chose you. It's based on God's choice, not on ours. Our sins are forgiven. What's more is Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He tears up that old bill of ownership the devil has, plucks us out of his arms, and places us firmly into God's arms. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's showing all that he's done for us, because I live, you also shall live. He gives us the power now to live this love for God, to want to obey his commandments. And to keep his word, because he has done everything for us. But it would be so much easier to love God, it would be so much easier to live for Jesus, or to even share his word with others, if we just saw him, wouldn't it? Just seeing Jesus once would make such a big difference for us. The disciples, after Jesus' resurrection from the dead, they all got to see Jesus. He appeared to them on and off for a period of 40 days after Easter, before he would ascend into heaven. Even people like Saul, the, the cruel persecutor of Christians, all of a sudden his life turned 180 degrees when he saw the risen Savior. So why doesn't God make it that much easier for us? Why doesn't Jesus show himself to us? Well, the answer goes back to, to Jesus' own life. He wanted people to see and believe in him during his humiliation. As seeing the, the tortured, suffering Savior, that that would convict the world of their sin, so that today we see him through faith. Well, it's the same in our lives as well. As his believers, as his children in the world, we see past this world into an unseen hope and an unseen future, and all the while the world around us, the people in our lives wonder, how can that person live with such peace and hope and security? How can they live this way? When we face all the, the uh, convictions of our conscience that day after day convicts us of our sins and, and shows those ugly misdeeds and those ugly failures in front of our face, we don't live by our righteousness, but we live by God's unseen righteousness, a, a gift from heaven to you. When our world lives in the cloud of darkness and doubt, 
and fear. We peer through the, the gloom, through faith, and hear Jesus' words, I will not leave you as an orphan, but I will come to you. No matter how dark things get, he promises he's going to stay by our side. When the foundations of the world are shaken, whether it's by disease or, or uh, financial infrastructure falling apart, our world can shake and crumble apart. But through faith in Jesus, we look forward to an unseen city in heaven that God has laid the foundations for that will never be shaken, that will never be broken. Even when it comes to our struggle against the sinful flesh, Jesus promises he's going to give us another, another counselor, another comforter, the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, Paul says that if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, how much more will he give life to our mortal bodies? How much more will he help us live free from sin? Jesus' words today, because I live, you also shall live. Therefore, Christians feeling like they live in a remote Christianity, it's a promise and assurance that he is by our side with us every day. And not just because we keep his commandments, but because there's these other commands like baptism and communion, and just hearing the word that Jesus our living Savior promises that, that brings us to Him and Him to us. He keeps that promise. Surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. We'll continue by singing the last two stanzas of our hymn of the day.
It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we praise you especially for the glorious resurrection of your Son, the true Passover Lamb, who by his sacrifice took away the sins of the world, and by his resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we join your holy name and praise their glory and join their glorious song.
Greetings again to each of you in our Savior Jesus' name. It's so nice to have you be able to tune in with us today. I want to thank you for taking the time, and again, a special thanks to our church choir here that's, that's supporting our online services. With that, we pray the Lord's richest blessings to each and every one of you. 